Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Today I'm going to continue in the series 24 Deceptive Practices in Today's Churches. Now, if you haven't seen part one through six, it's available to you. I'm going to put the links below. I wanted to start off with talking about what the site is about. This channel is about teaching about church and world deception from a biblical viewpoint. So I hope that you find all the resources that you find at the lightofdeception.com. Um, it's going to be useful to you and to learn all these ins and outs about what's going on in today's world as related to what's coming in today's churches. So this is going to be such an interesting continuation in this series. So what we're going to be talking about today is children. How are children being influenced by transcendental med meditation? How does it come into as early as preschoolers and on through the ages where a child can understand and start practicing transcendental meditation. It could be that they're just trying to learn to breathe and calm down. It could be that they're going through some kind of anxiety in these days. And so maybe the parents are thinking uh, we need to get into these practices of yoga and our kids need to be able to be more calm and learn how to breathe through their troubles and why is the that it's the children in these young ages are so anxious and and, and are experiencing anxiety it could be stuff that's going on in the family it could just be the world that we're living in and i say that a lot of times it's going to be technology a lot of the stuff that these little guys are getting involved with are all kinds of action on tv right all these things and scenes switching and changing and all this stuff is happening right so in their quiet time they're still anxious they have devices in their hands they had uh, phones and games at a, a at a very young age and so living in without having all kinds of distractions and all kinds of flashing scenes and everything moving at such a fast rate and then all of a sudden things calm down is how can you stop fidgeting around because you're so used to going so fast and so how can the enemy get a hold of our children can't he lure us into mindful thinking mindfulness thinking um, transcendental meditation to calm the child down it, and i know that sometimes people use these things for adhd AD, add and different things like that and that they feel like that if they can just blink out their mind if they can just say a mantra over and over again if they can just be in the silence for a certain amount of time and then they increase the times you know if they can get into the meditation where they're just uh, crisscrossing their legs and putting their hands up in the air if they can just get into these stances in yoga maybe this will calm the child down so what really happens when children get involved in transcendental meditation i want you to see these videos i'm going to stop between the videos but i think i'm going to show three of them they're pretty short they're a couple minutes each so here's the first one let me give you the title for it too so you know what we're going to be um Looking at first, it's called Teaching Your Child How to Meditate. After that, it's going to be Kids and Meditation. Then the third one's going to be Mindful Kids in 10 minutes. You're going to, they're going to be using 10 minutes a day. So and then the last one, there is a fourth one here, but they're all very short. It's called Breathe, Calm, Connect in 10 minutes a day. So those two are kind of the same. They're going to be the same principle. But I want to show you how a child as early as two years old can start being led into transcendental meditation and how these are in today's schools. Now, I'm not saying all private schools have them there, have it in there. Lots of public schools, some private schools, some private Christian schools are adopting these methods and bringing them into the school. So here we go. Growing numbers of people say meditation helps them keep calm and focused in their daily lives. Could the practice also work for children who aren't necessarily known for their capacity for sitting still? Well, growing numbers of families are making meditation part of their daily routines. And here to tell us more is WSJ's work family columnist, Sue Schellenbarger. Hi, Sue. I mean, can a child really be taught to meditate? There's usually a certain amount of giggling and wiggling that goes on, and it, it takes time and patience and a sense of humor, but it can be done. So tell us about some of the families you spoke with who are trying family meditation. How do they approach it? 
one mom who's a longtime meditator simply set an example for her son and found that he really wanted to join in and she naturally let him take part when he wanted to. Another family of an eight-year-old girl uh, started a candle gazing meditation for five to 15 minutes after breakfast every morning, setting a routine worked and the daughter seemed to enjoy that. With younger children, it can be good to use guided meditations where um, there's a little book called Sitting Still Like a Frog, where as the title implies, you teach your child to sit like a frog poised and alert or to focus on breathing in the belly rather than let your thoughts carry you away so there are a lot of there are also classes uh, at some meditation centers now for children okay can you see how easy it would be to teach a child from such an early age to get in touch with their um, silence to get in touch with their the quietness and to think on nothing and just kind of empty out the brain and how you can get a child to you know they'll teach it in a way that seems like that maybe their education will be better maybe they can think and be quiet for a while maybe these things can you know help them in education so they're going to promote it based on calming the children down so they can actually think more well, how about reading a book to a child? How about reading the Bible to a child? Child, how about you know just having quiet conversations, laying with a ch- you know your child and holding your child, having moments like that instead of um, being in transcendental meditation? So here is the next one. How about you, Heidi? What? What's meditation? So you can feel good. How about you? So you can relax and help your body help make it healthy. Okay. Do you have another answer? To clear out your your mind. To clear out your mind. Okay. Now, can somebody tell me what is the proper way to meditate? Just now, you were explaining to me how do you guys meditate. Go ahead. Um, you fold your legs and you put your hands, position it like this, and then the you teacher close your eyes. and you close your eyes. It 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 it, it was sit uh, and crisscross applesauce or half orders or full orders and you put your hands in the lap and you close your eyes. Can you show me what half lotus is? What's half lotus? Half lotus is you put your Actually, other half leg half up and, and you put your other leg up too. No, half lotus is only one leg and uh, full lotus is two it, it, It's both legs up. Mm-hmm. Which one of you guys can do a full lotus? Can you show oh, we do half lotus, but, but, the, but, um, yeah, I've got it. Yay. So we want students to get um, a chance to practice meditation and experience um, this practice because it will help them to understand themselves better and be more aware of um, their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts. And it also has effects that are helpful for their academic studies. They will concentrate better. Um, Some have reported that they have better memories. Um, It's also a time for them to relax. Um, Perhaps, especially in the higher grades, there's a lot of stress from homework, from peer pressure, um, from just a tight schedule with lots of activities, and some have said that it's the only time where they really get to focus on themselves and not be doing something. And sometimes when they have um, problems, uh, emotional turmoil, it's a good time for them to just reflect on it. And um, we start it right from kindergarten because it, it's a skill, just like any kind of physical skill or reading or writing or uh, learning to play basketball. Um, you have to build it up gradually 
so um, young children um, don't it doesn't ne necessarily come naturally to them to sit quietly for a long time so we start out where they sit just a minute and they have something to focus on and it, it's usually taught like a game so they they find it to be fun and then they gradually are drawn into learning how to sit quietly and be with themselves and observe um, observe themselves both like how they're breathing and where their thoughts are and how emotions um, affect their body so we also um, want them to be more mindful of their own thoughts speech and actions and so we start out by having them um, try to do some practice of mindfulness not only while they're sitting but to carry that into their daily life so in in some grades we've been giving them homework where they have to um, watch their breathing during the day during or right before they go to bed or observe if they get into a um, upset state what that feels like in their body um, so that they really come to be able to have control over their their bodies and their emotions mm -hmm. so really um, not so much a religious practice although in, um, it could be combined and, and sometimes it might be combined with chanting of a bodhisattva's name too but that is also to help focus the mind and calm calm down so some some of the students really like the musical aspect of it so um, we do chanting and they learn mantras but sometimes it's just more the quiet time and focusing see it's so easy the influence is there and it just seems like yeah I want my kid to do really good in school yeah I want my kid to quiet down so they can have a moment to get their thoughts together, but they're, if they're entering out their thoughts, what are you opening yourself up to? Here's the next one. Hello, it's Giselle from Kids Yoga Stories, and I'm excited to share with you today our Mindful Kids in 10 Minutes a Day resources. This one's for preschool to second grade, and this one's from third to fifth grade. And what we've been hearing from you is you're looking for mindful activities that's showing children that's an everyday practice, not just a one and done. For that reason, we've got four weeks of activities, Monday to Friday. So you've got lots of opportunity to gain momentum and show children that it's something that we do every single day and possibly throughout the day to help us take brain and body breaks. We're also hearing that you're having a hard time keeping or talking to the children about keeping still during mindfulness activities and we're instead showing you lots of different mindfulness activities sensory activities that encourage children to be more active or interactive so it doesn't have to just be about sitting still we've also heard that you're looking for self-regulation activities and we've incorporated a lot of those within the sensory or are talking about different feelings so there's lots of different varieties to to work towards different learning styles and preferences now, can you imagine doing that for 10 minutes with your child and then just kind of starting it briefly and then increasing it up to 10 minutes? What that's going to be to a child that's really being taught Buddhist techniques, right? Hinduism, the, the backdrop between, behind um, what the, these children are learning. They have no idea what they're getting involved in. I don't even think the parents realize the influence that these things can have on young children. Here's the last one. Hello, it's Giselle from Kids Yoga Stories, and I'm excited to share with you our Breathe, Calm, and Connect in 10 Minutes a Day resource. And so what we've been hearing from a lot of you is that we are concerned about the health and wellness of our children, and we want to help them manage their big emotions, to help them to self-regulate, to build resistance, and to cope with any challenges that come their way. And we're looking to do this in a sort of simple, done for you, easy to implement, quick and easy activities. So we put this together out of the focus on breathing more fully, calming ourselves in a variety of different ways and connecting with ourselves and others in healthy ways. So I was gonna show you what's inside this resource to see if it's a good fit for you. So first of all, it's a PDF download. This isn't a zip file, it's a PDF download. So it's super easy to print 
in color or black and white. I got this bound at a local printer. You can do that or you can just view it from a device, whatever works for you. So in here it says welcome to and it just it shows you our thematic ideas from Monday to Friday. So every Monday we have breathe activities, Tuesdays we have calming activities, Wednesdays we have connecting activities, Thursdays are for moving and Fridays are for play. So we've got that combination for every week of these four weeks. We also have tips for using this resource. We've got some tips there. We've got a section on where to start, how you get started. And here's our weekly schedule. Okay, the weekly schedule has a variety of activities. So we've got breathing, coloring pages, poses, games, po positive affirmations. So the idea here is to cater to all the different learning styles and preferences of our students. You never know what's actually going to plant a seed with a child and make the biggest difference. Okay, so there you go. You kind of get a full picture on how they're selling it how they're bringing the Eastern uh, meditation practices to your children and coming in with the uh, mindfulness practices. Go back and look at what I taught on on mindfulness for adults and what the roots are and where it came in and how they brought it in from, you know, from the Eastern mindset and into the West and how it got into the schools because it can't have religion tied into it. So it has to come in like, like a science. Right, it has to come in a, a different way so they knew not what not to say and how to get it into the schools and how to teach your children a mantra, Buddhism, um, breaths, you know, um, taking care of the child's breath to bring down um, their thoughts and to blank out the thoughts, right, and to open themselves up to things that they should never be opened up to. And a lot of times this can cause things, situations to get worse, they don't get better. You know, and so just think about what is the dangers also for a young child that is into meditation. Can it be dangerous? Can it lead to more anxiety? Can it lead to depression? Could it lead to different things if you're opening up your child to these kind of practices? And can't you just teach your child to calm down and um, have a quiet space and, you know, so they can sit and read a book and you can, you know, those kind of things and moments of it's okay to be quiet and have some still time without going into the silence. I think that's the difference. Here's something that I wanted to talk to you about a little bit more because it's just going to have a little bit more research behind it too. It's called Over 100 Pastors Sign Letter to Ohio Board of Education Opposing Yoga Meditation Being Taught in the Schools. That is so true. Beware of Mindfulness Meditation especially for children, is dangerous. And this is from Lighthouse Trails Research. They actually both are. Let's see why that would be so and why that would be dangerous. I'm just going to read a little bit of it so you can see. As a fast-growing number of public schools are incorporating mindfulness meditation into the lives of the school children, few seem aware of just how dangerous meditation can be, especially for children. The following is an excerpt from the, our 2018 booklet. It's called Mindfulness. Here's the dangers. So it says, numerous research reports show that meditation can be dangerous, especially for the vulnerable and weak, a category in which children fit. A preface to an article titled, Meditation is Touted as a Curse for Mental Instability, but Can It Actually Be Bad for You? And it says, if it's so powerful... Might meditation also do harm to sensitive souls? So he explains, meditation for all its de-stressing and um, self-development potential can take you deeper into the recesses of your mind than you may have wished for. People who were meditators and upon further research came to believe that meditation can be very dangerous. He found there were other professionals who agreed. In 1992, David Shapiro, a professor at the UCLA Irvine, published an article about the effects of meditation retreats. After examining 27 people with different levels of meditation experience, he found 63% 
of them had suffered at least one negative effect and seven percent profoundly advanced effects. So 7% had profoundly adverse effects. He continues, a number of Western Buddhists are aware that not all is plain sailing with meditation, and they have even given a name to the emotional difficulties that arise, the dark night, borrowing the phrase coined by the 16th century Christian mystic John St. John of the cross to describe an adverse stage of prayer and contemplation characterized by the emotional dryness in which the subject feels abandoned by God. Meditation can invoke the following results. It can bring feelings of emptiness and even fear. It can bring changes in your sense of self and cause impairment in social relationships. It can be disempowering and keep you passive, contained, and compliant. There were side effects discovered in the U.S. research exploring the phenomenon of meditation sickness by interviewing nearly 100 people. They found while some experience bliss from concentration on their breathing and practicing, loving kindness, others were left in pain and struggling to return to normal life. The article also reports on the study done by Brown University. The study published in the journal PLOS 1 describes the billion dollar meditation industry with more than 20 mobile phone apps now devoted to mindfulness. Now, like we were saying, the guy that we talked about last time that we were talking, the new age of the new age, he was talking about coming from transcendental meditation, making all this money, teaching people these practices. He was totally involved and had a website going. He had a beautiful home. He had a nice car. And then he had this encounter with Jesus that sounded very mystical as well. So what I'm saying here is... Although this can be very popular and make so much money, it can be dangerous. But medical reports um, document cases of meditation-induced psychosis, seizures, and inaya, while uh, Zen Buddhists have long acknowledged the existence of meditation sickness. A team led by the Brown University found that people could suffer ill effects from doing just half an hour of meditation or after only one day. Can you believe that? In the study, it was discovered that the most common side effects were fear, anxiety, panic, and paranormal. So if we're setting up our kids to go under this with all these side effects, right, then is it really going to be helping them with their fear and anxiety if it's causing fear and anxiety and panic, right? So we're opening them up to things that they, so they're struggling with things because of all this technology and all these things that there's, that, that's coming up. They have a lot of energy. They're children. They're, they're exposed to all kinds of different things. They might even have some traumas in their lives. So their parents are trying to be helpful and find them a, a way to get through these big traumatic times in their lives and things that have happened in their families. But they're leading them to, to the wrong place. Lead, lead them to the Lord. Pray with your children. Spend time with them. Talk with them. Read with them. You know. Okay, so there's another thing here. It says, this was experienced by 82% of those questioned, while 42% suffered hallucinations, visions, or illusions. And 28% said they had become hypersensitive to light and sound. That does not sound okay. So although these are talking about so many different things that are dangerous, why would you open this up to children? What are the real true benefits in it? And is the enemy ever taking a day off? You'd sure like to win the hearts and souls for children. So if you're dabbing into things that are anti-biblical, that are have warnings are going through the whole entire Bible, warning you against not taking in these practices. You're either a Christian grounded on the Bible and the Bible truths, right? or you're into some kind of worldly Christianity where you're blending the East and the West, you're blending, bringing in Eastern mysticism, mysticism into Christianity, and you're trying to merge the two, and you can't do that. Like Just like I said, you can take a full glass of water 
and boy it looks good right and you put two drops of sewage into it and do you want to drink it it consumes the whole cup so if you're putting in christianity and dropping in you know occult practices and your and and divination practices and you're adding that into christianity then it's just the whole entire cup is dark right it's it's toxic so be very, very careful. We're just going to end this by saying the effects are well documented in Buddhist text as stages along the long, hard path to inner wisdom, but aren't featured in mindfulness meditation brochures. Meditation is, in fact, a far deeper, more complex, and less well understood process than many people realize and then there's just a list of dangers going down here some dangers and effects of meditation i'm going to leave the link for you below so you can see all these we talked about some of some of this difficulty eating panic psychosis seizures right uh, visual hallucinations unable to focus or work a loss of sense of identity psychotic depression Elevated moves, moods and grandiose delusions, unrestrained behavior, pain, confusion, disorientations, feeling of emptiness. So why would we want to open our children up to this? Uh, depersonalization, impairment of social relationships, sensory aberrations, disempowering, cause passiveness. And compliant even when those are negative responses to certain situations Wow so be so 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 very careful be careful be careful yoga you think it's just stretching and all these different movements but each movement has a meaning behind it what is the meaning behind it do your research to find out what those movements mean also do you want if you're getting into yoga, you might not know what yoga means yoked with. So what are you yoking yourself with? When I used to go to um, yoga classes way back when, I, before I knew all the dangers with yoga, they would always tell you to breathe in, breathe out. Imagine you are in a field and there's grass and the wind is blowing. Or you're at the beach and they're, you're trying to, you know, they're giving you all these visualization things that you can go into. But if, we, if I only knew that yoga meant that I was starting to, this is for people that are starting to reincarnate their later on in life they're trying to let go of this life and get ready to reincarnate into the next life find out what yoked with yoked with means and you don't want to yoke yourself with divination practices and open yourself up to occultism and you have no idea that's the, what you're doing so be so cautious and protect your children against these practices i hope this helps you thank you for listening bye bye